Good morning, Paul Georgie from Allendale. It's September 17th, Tuesday morning, and uh, we've got an official turnaround Tuesday going here today with the corn and soybeans up uh, sharply, up double digits as we speak. Uh, a lot of that comes from the support from the uh, FSA numbers that were released at, uh, at about 5.13 this morning is when I got them. The, uh, they showed that the... Uh, Acres for uh, corn that were prevent planted increased to about 3.6 million acres, and the soybean acres increased up to almost 1.7 million acres of uh, prevented planting. Now these numbers are uh, are is data that the FSA continues to get from their reporting stations around the country uh, based on the insurance. Uh, Results that uh, producers have taken prevent planting, and based on the uh, the acreage numbers that are reported. So these numbers will continue to change all the way into January when we get the final number. But uh, the uh, USDA supply demand report next month will be looking at these numbers. They may take uh, take into account the numbers, the percentages. They don't have to use the exact numbers that. Uh, the FSA comes out with. So all in all, a bit supportive because of the increase in uh, prevented planting uh, acres. The uh, other news, uh, the NOPA crush number was out yesterday. That was right in line with what was needed to meet the USDA's goals. They still have to deal with the uh, export sales uh, that all the way through August, the end of the marketing year. Uh, we're going to be watching the quarterly stocks report very closely uh, here. That comes out on uh, the 30th of September, so that uh, that will be a focus as we uh, as we move forward. Other news: uh, talk of dry conditions in Argentina in the corn growing areas, but we have to realize that we're just getting started planting there. Uh, the, if we look back to our own situation here in the U.S. last year, uh, that early planted corn that was planted in the dust, so to speak, uh, is some of the highest producing corn that we've seen uh, thus far this year. So uh, not completely, uh, I don't think we can completely count out the uh, production in, uh, in Argentina and that a lot of uh, corn will be switched to soybeans. It's a bit early to, uh, uh, to worry about that just yet. We do have uh, FOMC meeting uh, starting today, go through tomorrow. Uh, we'll have the minutes out tomorrow. The big question there is, will the Fed begin tapering the uh, money that they're dumping into the system on a monthly basis? Trade is looking for about $10, million, $10 billion uh, reduction on a monthly basis initially. And uh, we'll have to see how that comes out. But that's certainly adding a lot of uncertainty, a lot of nervousness to the uh, equity markets and in turn uh, to fund traders and their positions uh, in the market. Uh, basis uh, continues to uh, drop in the uh, soybeans. Uh, the big question there is will, with the basis continuing to drop, will the producers sell their cash beans, the early beans, uh, at these prices? Uh, they've got their bins empty. They don't need cash at this point in time. Uh, and uh, the question will be, uh, will producers sell at the, at the lower levels, at least until we see what kind of yield potential uh, is out there in the, uh, in the soybean uh, uh, production areas. Corn basis steady. Uh, ethanol plants uh, continue to be uh, relatively steady, but they have sold off or dropped here in the, the last uh, few days and weeks. So uh, corn continues to be harvested. We get, we're getting reports now of uh, the early corn still uh, producing well above what trade expected. Other producers uh, further north are starting to harvest the areas that are uh, in the fields that are extremely dry, that uh, died early. The yields there are disappointing. Uh, the uh, producers are... Uh, we're expecting uh, an example of expecting about 180 bushel an acre came in at 165, one producer had. But we got to remember, those are uh, coming off of acres that were uh, prematurely uh, uh, dead because of the, uh, the drought. So uh, 
the overall uh, numbers still look very good. Soybean yields uh, all over the board, soybean yields out of the south uh, continue to be exceptionally good. Uh, very little uh, harvest going on here in the uh, uh, corn belt uh, as moisture uh, that we've had over the weekend uh, is slowing that process. Uh, we've also had the crop conditions report out yesterday, uh, reducing corn by 1% in the uh, good to excellent category, 2% in the uh, soybeans. The uh, livestock trade um, cut out values there in the hogs uh, and the pork values were down 134 yesterday. Choice beef was up 33 and select down 25. Uh, cattle on feed report Friday. Uh, some of the action that we've seen in the futures market continues to be promoted by uh, managed money coming into the uh, pork complex. They're setting new uh, all-time uh, long position records uh, on a weekly basis as reported by the CFTC. Uh, and some of the reasons for that strength is the, uh, uh, the transition from Smithfield uh, to the uh, Chinese company, expecting that more exports are on the horizon. Uh, another reason is the recent heat uh, that we've had and the uh, PED virus is tightening up some of the hog supplies that are uh, the market-ready hogs that are going to market. And I think there is also some holdback in uh, some of these market hogs, the gilts for breeding uh, as the... Uh, Profitability looks much more encouraging as we uh, move into next year with cheaper uh, grain prices and uh, strong uh, pork prices. So uh, uh, that, how long will that last? That's the, uh, the question here is that market is extremely uh, overbought right now. Uh, watch that uh, if you're trading it from the long side. Make sure you use proper risk protection there. If you have any questions, uh, give us a call. We'll try to answer those questions for you. You can reach us at 800-262-7538. We wish everybody a very successful trading day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow morning. Thank you.